All right, Alexis, go for it. It's, it's all you. Thank you very much. So I hoped that today we could go through the helping projects discussion uh, and talk about, you know, what is it we care about here? What do we feel is generally uh, being done? What's what's perhaps not being done? Um, and, you know, I saw there was a long discussion uh, on email on the public TOC list between many people, some of whom may be on the call today, some of whom may not, with suggestions as to what we could do with projects. Um, so why don't we start, Chris, with you just telling everybody a little bit about, you know, what is the uh, <clears throat> short, medium, and long-term picture for helping projects? What have you learned? What, what can you share? Uh, <laughs> sure. So, um, you know, we have a resource available for projects uh, uh, to request help um, via the service desk. So um, we've had about 100 or so folks use that since we um, started that about, it's probably been almost a year since that was formed. Um, you know, uh, we offer a variety of services from tech writing, um, event management, it's all pretty much spelled out there on the service desk. So I, I don't know where you want to dive in particular, um, Alexis here. Um, so this is... Why don't you tell us what you think the main asks coming through the service desk have been? Um, place so far. Yeah, I mean, I would say most of the requests probably have to deal with uh, either website, tech docs, um, logo help are probably the majority of the requests. Um, other things that have come up probably second up is uh, help with either sponsoring event uh, travel to speak at an event or sponsoring like an outreachy internship or something around that type of um, line or actually host uh, uh, an event. So whether it's like a prom con or a, GR, a GRPC conference that we're gonna be hosting next year for the GRPC community. So it generally falls in those kind of three things of, hey, we need help with docs, uh, B, we need funding to send someone to uh, an event or something to that nature or sponsor an intern through this program, uh, or third, uh, we need help running uh, some type of event or community meeting or gathering, uh, generally kind of fall in those three main uh, type, of, type of categories. Would you be able to say kind of what is the total expenditure from the CNCF that's gone into these things? Uh, not offhand. Uh, it would be hard to, I mean, I could try to formulate things in terms of like, uh, you know, there's a handful of staff available for CNCF projects that kind of counts expenditure. Are you asking for expenditures on interns, tech docs? How do you like? Yeah, I mean, just generally, you know, out of the total budget in the CNCF, what are the things that we, what would be the kind of rough amount that you think is kind of going towards helping projects at the moment? Yeah, and I, I would say more generally, it would be useful to, on some regular cadence, get a like a quarterly cadence, get a breakdown report of here's how much money we've spent, here's the projects we've spent it on, here are the resources we've spent it on, just so it, 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 to communicate it broadly to the TOC, to the community, because I'm sure, I, I'm sure there are projects that are unaware, or there are projects that are unaware that this resource is available to them. Sure. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we do survey our projects at least twice a year. So um, we just are finalizing that exercise now, at least for the second half uh, of this year. So um, I'm happy to kind of share some of those results for you. But um, for, you know, most, most projects are aware of this resources. Some are not uh, aware of the service desk. Uh, but generally, I find that projects that uh, take meetings uh, with the CNCF staff as they are onboarding, onboarded, tend to be more aware than those who just kind of want to be left alone to their own devices, if that makes sense. So, Yeah, so, so let, let me re repeat the request. It would be yeah. great to get a quarterly report on, on how, on the requests that we are dealing with and what we're doing and for whom. That's what I'm really asking for. Not surveying the projects, but really asking for a, a regular report to the TOC of a, a total breakdown, um, a written report of what Alexis is asking. Uh, sure. I mean, we're happy to dump service desk data for you. So it's all available there. 
I think it would be very helpful. I mean, you know, it's, it's more, I appreciate that um, in the surveys, we're seeing that many of the people who respond are either responding with three, four or five out of a maximum of five. Uh, and there the happily aren't, aren't that many threes. Um, however, you know, that's a slightly different thing from, um, hey, look, these are the things that we've tried that are successful and people seem to be having progress with, yeah. you know, make it public. And then everybody else who is either in a current project or in potentially a future project looking in can go, ah, okay, they did that for this project. That was a good thing. Why don't we ask for that too? Yeah, I mean, makes sense. I mean, we'll like for next uh, next TOC meeting, we'll have kind of the finalized uh, survey results, takeaways, and all that stuff kind of in <clears throat> digestible form. But I'm pretty happy with the results this time around because we've actually uh, looks like we just about have every project has responded in some form or another. So that's pretty good for us compared to uh, last time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm going to just mention, though, it is a self-selecting group, and I've talked to a couple of people who are like, why would I bother to do it? The list is the same as last time. So there's, you have, we have a disconnect between what's happening with the CNCF and the projects, because I've had a number of people say that to me, like, I'll just, okay, fine, I'll go submit the maintainer survey, but I'm going to put the same list. Sarah, what do you mean by put the same list in? I'm sorry. The same list of things that they'd like changed or fixed or, or addressed. Like there's a dis there's a disconnect in the we're happy with you and the people who are less happy are not submitting the survey. Yeah, I'm worried about that too. I mean, and also you know being a kind of generally glass half empty sort of person, I look at a three or a four and I think, oh no, why is it not a five? You know, so I do think that um, you know one of the things that we were trying to do is have projects with communities with generally positive, warm, welcoming, friendly, diverse people. And those people may not necessarily be the first to, you know, to feel that it's a good thing to moan, to feel like they're moaning about something. So I think we do need to kind of encourage people to speak up if they, if they want things more than perhaps we are doing. Uh, I, uh, I will speak to me and my team, uh, hassling developers constantly fill up surveys is, uh, it, it, it is a pain in the ass and we've, yeah. we, we've tried have, have like we've deliberately went out to every project this time to try to get at least 100% feedback from every project and, yeah. and we're on track to do that. So it, it, it's hard. And, you know, developers are, I know, it's, are hard. <laughs> so. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. I know it's a lot of effort. Getting yeah. people respond to these things. So, um, yeah. That's so, why I think that structuring a report about what we're doing for those projects is a way to push that out to them and to, for them, for, for folks is just to be aware. And I think it's just going to be very helpful to have that information out there. Again, when, what we're spending on and the, 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 the types of requests that we're dealing with, how we resolve. Okay. Um, we also had a, a long thread on the list about some sort of specific suggestions for things that people wanted. Um, I'm just looking at it now, but I believe Chris, did you take some of the issues and copy paste them into a, a, a document? Yeah, there's a doc. Let me go find it. Um, also, is, is uh, anyone taking minutes for the in the document? Would anyone like to take minutes in the document? I'm happy to take minutes as much as possible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll try. I'll try. Thank I you. Can, we could both do it. Yeah. Um, one one thing I'll try to add to that I just I just thought about because I had a very frustrating meeting this morning at at work around metrics for open source projects. So I think we should probably come up with a set of metrics for each of the projects. Um, well, one set of metrics, but then measure each project against that set of metrics, if that makes any sense. But I'll add that to the document later. Cool. And, and this is outside of what we have via dev stats, correct? Correct. Is correct. Yeah. 
more on like health and growth and maintainability and support and security, all those types of things. Those might be moved too specific to MasterCut issues, but okay. some of them some yeah. of them might be helpful as well for what we're trying to measure in terms of health. Yeah, I, I also I made a similar request a few weeks ago, and I forgot to reply to Chris's response. Um, I think that the survey that we do is very useful, but it provides a um, kind of an overall view across all the projects, and it doesn't identify the distinctions between perhaps the high scoring ones and the low scoring ones. <clears throat> um, and it also, you know, only really looks at areas where where multiple choice questions work. So I, I think it'd be good to to get a per project breakdown um, to whatever extent that's possible. I don't know if your survey yeah. provides yeah. that breakdown. Does it, can it break yeah. it down per project? Sorry. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, we, we could do per project. Uh, yeah, that's not, that's not that problem. That's not that hard to do this time around. But, but am I imagining things or, or was that not in the results that we got last time? I thought that was just averaged across all the projects. Uh, for, the first, for the first survey, we could deduce it based on uh, emails and uh, affinity and stuff like that. But the second survey, we asked which projects folks are affiliated with. So it's easier to, <clears throat> to get that data. So if, I'm happy for the next uh, November 6th meeting to, to do that breakdown for you. Awesome. Thanks. So I'm just not, not seeing this appearing in the minutes yet. So we have a few things. One is um, a link to the, to the yeah, document I, that Chris has just pasted in the chat. Um, the next is Ken's point about health metrics, discussion around that. Um, I, so on the, the, the metrics, um, I, I think there's a real peril there. I'd want us to be very careful about I, The last thing I want us to do is stack rank our projects based on some arbitrary criteria or even worse, perversely incentivize our projects to act not in their best interest, but in the best interest of the metrics because they feel they need to. So I, I before we kind of blindly accept that, because I, I feel that we should be spending much more time measuring what we are doing for our projects than measuring how our projects are doing, um, which I think is a much, much more of a qualitative judgment. I think that's a good point. Um, for me, health metrics would be something like, I mean, I'm sure Ken has a bunch of things that he's just been discussing with his colleagues, as you mentioned, but for me, I would like to ask a member of each project, you know, so a question like this, you know, if, 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 we, if we did a poll of everybody who's a maintainer in your project, would you expect them to say the project is healthy or unhealthy? Yes, um, I think, yeah, I think that is a good idea. I think asking the metrics that focus on how the maintainers themselves view the project, view the future of the project, that way we're not imposing any metric about commits or stars or forks or anything else we are allowing the maintainer we are deferring that to how the maintainers feel about their own project so there were a couple of points made earlier which are not in the minutes yet um brian Trantrill requested a uh, breakdown on a periodic perhaps quarterly basis of um what have what are the things that have been done uh for what has been requested what has been approved and what has been actually executed upon by the service desk mechanism and what what is the rough if any i don't know whether it's the appropriate question but is there a budget number we can put on that okie doke thank you so if we go back to if you look in um chris's document which is linked to in the um the chat window there uh, you'll see there is a summary of the thread from the mailing list, um, including contributions from Jesse, Ben Siegelman, Matt Klein, Eduardo Silva, myself, and a few other people, I think. <laughs> yes. Um, so one of the things that, I was, that I've seen come up a lot in discussions is the need for community management. Um, is this something, Chris, that, that you've seen coming up through the maintainer service desk request mechanism? What are your thoughts upon it? Depend, what do you mean by community management? That's kind of well, a broad... Well, good question. I mean, yeah. remember we had some, uh, some conversations with a couple of the projects like Prometheus, trying to yeah. understand you know, how the community functions and whether yeah. it's helpful to provide a funded part person who could uh, wrangle mm -hmm. some of the community issues. That's what I'm talking about, that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, that hasn't been formally requested at least, but we do have folks on staff, um, you know, Luke, per Luke Perkins, Zach and others that kind of, Ehor, that kind of 
do this role somewhat already. Like Ehor does it for Kubernetes quite a bit. So, but it hasn't been formally requested. So community manage is a broad term, right? Like, do you mean GitHub rankling? Do you mean taking minutes? Like it's it's a kind of all in all in one type job. One of the things that we've been trying to do at Weaveworks with open source projects is have uh, one of the community managers spend time encouraging contributions, um, talking about them on, on, on Twitter and, and other places, and generally trying to bring more people into the project. It's quite a, it's a proactive activity. It requires somebody to actually go out and do that. Now, some of these um, project, open source projects have very charismatic or energized leads who just do that anyway. Mm -hmm. um, a good example would be OpenFAS. What, what about the projects where we think some help could be provided? Yeah, I mean, we have folks on staff. It just has to be requested. So we have um, Luke doing examples for Prometheus, for example. Uh, Ehor goes around, sp speaks on all sorts of Kubernetes topics. So uh, it hasn't been formally requested, but if, if a project wants someone to help out, like, I mean, part of what you're uh, saying is also a bit of a, could be considered like a developer marketing function or even marketing function, mm -hmm. right? So, um, and, you know, it's been a sensitive topic in the past of how much marketing we do for, certain projects so um, i think it's a line we have to be uh careful of i think having a community manager helping ensure that projects are healthy or uh, you know spoken to in a way that they understand what service available is a good thing but i think we have to be wary about marketing maybe more of our early stage projects in inadvertently which has been that's true that's happens. true um i mean it could be a service for incubated projects and yeah. graduated you know there's things like um yeah. maintaining hygiene in the conversation on GitHub, no. you know, we've had that issue with a few places. No. Um, I, I just, you know, because obviously if, if that doesn't get done by somebody, it will have to be done by yeah. either a volunteer in the project or, or by Chris, yeah. that means you, or I, by somebody else in the TOC who wants to stick their nose in. And I think neither of those yeah. is necessarily the right answer. Yeah. Cool. So that was an example of something where I think a proactive suggestion would be helpful. I mean, there were others as well. Um, would anyone like to speak to any of the issues in this in this page from contributions from Matt, Eduardo, Jesse, Ben, and so on? So Matt raised the point about GitHub experience around DCO, bots, issue management, and CI. He said, I suspect there is easily a full-time tooling job across all of CNCF, CI, and negotiating with vendors for the right amount of staff. Yeah, I was going to make a, a brief comment, which is that, you know, many of these projects don't actually know what they need, uh, and they don't know what they're missing. Uh, and I think if, again, restating what you've said, Alexis, if we could take the lessons learned from the successful projects, for example, Kubernetes is big and, and well-established and has you know, community hangouts and a whole bunch of other things that smaller projects, and I'm not talking about the sandbox projects, I'm talking about the incubating and graduated projects um, would benefit from, we can actually put packages together and sell them or give them to these projects as opposed yep. to for them to ask for something. Yeah, it's like a tiered offering on a SaaS. If you upgrade to the community manager edition, uh -huh. you'll get... Um, no, I think that's a good idea. I mean, again, it goes back to Brian's point about, about sharing information about what the projects are doing and what we're doing for the projects. Mm -hmm. So if we could somehow um, create a table of, I know that Chris has tried some of these things before, create a table of, here are some things that we are seeing the projects do, like this project has a community manager, this project doesn't, this project has a full-time docs team, this project doesn't, and then try and focus on what are the gaps that can be filled for all the projects and make them really super successful. Yeah, I, 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 and I'll just speak up real quick here. You know, we talk about the automation and tooling. And when Helm was under Kubernetes, we used a bit of that. And now that we're out, instead of continuing to use Kubernetes, we're actually starting to write some of our own. So it's a little different um, because we're just, uh, there's certain things we want to do a little differently about it. Mm -hmm. But it's the same idea. I think there, there might be a certain amount of tooling. And if there was an easy way to share it, and I mean, a simple one that Kubernetes has and we're bringing back over on Helm is, mm -hmm. um, doing a quick analysis of PR size 
and to look is it small, medium, large, extra large, and that kind of thing. So at a glance, we can get that via labels. And is that something others would want? I don't know. Um, but it's something, do we know what these kinds of things are across project? Because if one person does it, it might be nice to share it amongst a bunch of the projects and make it easy to, to reuse. And is this something the CNCF could host for a bunch of projects to use? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, if, if it's something that seems to be applicable to other projects, I see no reason why it couldn't be um, funded, discussed. I don't know what the right conclusion would be, but we should certainly be considering uh, such things, surely. What about the issue of, you know, are there any projects that feel like they have asked for stuff, Chris, and not gotten it? What is, what is our um, story on that? Yeah, I mean, I, I'll have the concrete survey data next time around. Uh, so I don't, I haven't dived through each response yet since the survey just closed um, right. yesterday. What do you think would be a good way of putting together a plan of action, Chris, on uh, some of the activities where which are being minuted and also responding to um, specific uh, negative issues coming out of the survey, you know, things that people feel that they didn't get or they asked for and they didn't get, um, that we could actually um, set out as a plan and then execute on. Yeah, no, I mean, for the next TOC meeting, I plan to share all the results, including the takeaways, the negatives, and so on, and uh, concrete actions from any of the negative uh, responses. Okay. So here's another issue that is in here that's come up on another part of the mailing list is the topic of mid-sized community scale camp as Matt called them, campsite, camp style meetings. Um, what are your feelings on that, Chris? Do you think that's something that we can make systematic? Are you, do, you wanna, do you wanna do it reactively? What's your, what's your feeling? Um, we've, we've already talked to our uh, marketing team to explore the topic for next year. We've, always, we've already had ideas around doing smaller, more regional uh, events for CNCF. Uh, next year in kind of areas that we haven't, you know, say been to before like India or South America or doing like a three city type tour in Europe, um, doing kind of these self service word camp style events for the community is something I'm open to exploring. Um, you know, our, our events team is basically looking at this now and seeing if we could kind of do a, uh, a cloud native event in a box or seeing if in a box uh, for folks to uh, kind of hit that sweet spot between a uh, small meetup to uh, you know large KubeCon style events. So we've definitely heard the feedback and, and we're working on it to kind of come up with uh, a solution uh, for folks. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many are going to take us up on it, but um, we could see if we kind of offer like a CNCF event in a box for folks, like a WordCamp style thing, outside of our original already plans for regional, smaller regional events next year, kind of one day regional events. Yeah. Yeah, happy to hear any more feedback on that. So um, there's Anyone? many ways to kind of do these things. So um. can we? Um, it's probably not the it's kind of like an ad hoc thought, but um, have we thought about maybe offering up some kind of like a joint TLC slash um, project day at like one of the events, like all of the events we have? Uh, like, like, uh, you mean at like the cube cons or the, uh, yeah, like, like a cube con, yeah, like cube con type of event, like at the major event. So they're having like a, yep, a day to the side that we could sit down with, you know, have the projects kind of rotate through like half hour, hour to kind of just see what we can do to help them and how things mm -hmm. are going with, with our help. So we're giving them that kind of mm -hmm. like retrospective slash joint collaboration type of exercises. Yeah, I mean, we could either, I mean, we've tried the panel route before, uh, but if you kind of want to do, I think what you're proposing is like office hours-esque um, 
Is, is that kind of what you're saying, Ken? Like, hey, people yeah, could just yeah, sign, something... up, sign up and chat with a member right. of the TLC to, to give feedback? Right. Cool. Uh, if, if you want to do that, I'm happy to enable it for uh, KubeCon, Shanghai, and Seattle and get the events team to kind of do an office hours, depending on your schedule, essentially, and maybe have folks rotate 30-minute slots or an hour if, if you think that's best. Totally flexible on how you, I know you're super busy at these events too, so it's always hard to uh, schedule things. Cool. If there's no object, if, if there's no objection to that, then consider it done for uh, the two upcoming KubeCons. Does that sound okay to, to other TLC members? I don't want to speak for everyone. Sounds great. Cool. Thanks. Okay. Does anyone else want to raise any issues around what's in the document? There's a few other things we haven't talked about in that document, like bug bounties and user research is another one. Um, would anyone like to advocate for either of those two things? I definitely like the bug bounty idea a lot. Yeah, we're... What do you think about that one, Chris? That's more, more of a... Yeah, yeah, I mean, so... Complex. Yeah, it's a little more complex. So uh, on the Kubernetes front, we're actually working with the Kubernetes community to essentially select a vendor for this. There's some meetings on Friday. So I think the Kubernetes community is gonna eventually pick a vendor to do this. Um, if that experience goes well, I'm open to kind of offering this as a service for other projects. But um, you know, these bug bounty platforms always uh, have their own pros and cons in terms of false positives and just being a potential drain on uh, maintainers in dealing with issues, so. Um, but yeah, we're exploring it for Kubernetes. I think the Kubernetes community is going to make a decision fairly soon over the next few weeks on a vendor. You know, uh, just to jump in here, I, I, I like this for like released versions in graduated projects or something like that, because I know it's costly and you already have to prove yourself. And so not throwing it out there for everyone, but security bug bounties, I think is a big deal. And quite frankly, I don't think, um, many of the projects and I've worked on Helm and Kubernetes, uh, so I can at least speak to those, spend enough time dealing with security and threat analysis and truly understanding what's going on. So uh, and I'm sure many of the members, especially the end users are really concerned with security. And so if there's some way that we can help put carrots out there and help egg this along in the projects, mm -hmm. I really like being able to put that out there, especially for graduated projects. You mean just a straight up security bounty? Uh, for security bugs, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, not, not so much a bug bounty, but a security mm -hmm. going after that to try to improve the security of these projects. And I've asked about some things and, and folks mm -hmm. are saying, well, we're moving too fast or we're too busy to do this. Okay. And, and as somebody who's going to use this stuff, uh, I don't like hearing that. I'd like to kind of put a carrot out there and invent incentivize security. Yeah, I de totally with you. I mean, one thing we try to do is have projects go kind of through the CII badging process, which helps you basically at least start with a security disclosure process for your project. And then, uh, but that's just a very kind of, you know, good thing to have in early days. Um, we've done security, we spent quite a, quite a bit of money on security audits also, which kind of helped, but the whole bug, like the security bounties, bug bounties, it's a different Different problem. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I like, I like ideas on how to improve security for projects. So just keep them coming, and and, and we'll see. I really hope with the Kubernetes experience, we're able to kind of offer this for a, um, uh, for for other projects, and maybe we just make it for graduated only, given that the, it is fairly, like these vendors aren't cheap, <laughs> like you said. So. Well, when, and I think the, the, the question is, how do we foster a culture of security in these projects? Yeah. You can't inflict security on a project that doesn't have that cultural value. So yeah. we do, but I think that that's kind of what we want to figure out how to do. And 
bug bounties can be a useful part of that because I yeah. think in my experience, the thing that most readily gets that culture is the discovery that your software can actually be exploited in ways that are very creative and things that <laughs> you do not intend can be done with it. Um, and that's a, that can be a big wake up call for a project. So a bug bounty can kind of get them to that point, yeah. but I think we need to focus on yeah. how do we foster that culture of security. What, what, what's your thought about doing like the security audits, Brian? Because for some projects, like, so like Core DNS, you know, they found a couple surprise issues and it basically forced them to, you know, make sure their security disclosure process was good. Um, it, it's probably easier for us to fund a security audits than it is like a third party bug bounty type type vendor. But I, I think if I, and again, I would be in kind of conversation with the, pro, with the project. I think if they've already got a culture of security, a security audit is probably a great thing. It's something that will be welcomed. I think if they don't have that as a value, the security audit might be perceived as, as someone, as an IRS audit. Um, it might not be very welcome. Um, so I think we would just need to, to work with the project. <laughs> and I, I think that what, what we want to see, which I think is very reasonable, is that for graduated projects, security is one of the values of the project. Um, okay. It's more important, it's much more important to me that security is one of the values than it is quote unquote secure because um, software by its nature is, 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 can't be completely secured. So it's yeah. much more important that, that they have that, that cultural value. Of course, demonstrating that is difficult and fostering that is difficult and so on, okay. but that's really what the high order bit. Okay, okay, cool. It looks like Bob Wise has a question since he's raising his hand and I feel bad for <laughs> not saying so. Bob, Bob, do you have something to say? You're on mute right now. Uh, yeah, I wanted to make the suggestion that um, I've run across the situation a couple of times where uh, a company is interested in, say, better security for Project X because they use Project X or having bug bounties on something they're dependent on. And um, if there were a mechanism to allow um, companies who don't want to set up their own bounties to actually, to be able to um, inject funding that's project specific, I think the CNCF could be a great place for kind of managing that. That was it. Cool. Awesome. Cool. Yep. Suggestion noted. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. And one brief comment about security audits. Um, I, I've put many projects through many security audits and there's a wide range of usefulness of these things ranging from complete irritation, useless uh, security audit, didn't tell us anything and just got in the way to, wow, that's amazing. We didn't know that stuff about our project and we're going to jump on it and fix it up. And, and I think it's, again, a service the CNCF can provide is to you know, uh, what's the right word, trial run these things and, and be very sure that the security audit process and team and whatever vendors we select, we can stand behind and say, these guys are great. And, and you know, almost everybody who's used them in the CNCF is very happy with the outcome, as opposed to, you know, the far other extreme, which is we impose this useless audit on all projects and they just get irritated. Yeah, uh, definitely. Definitely. I, I think most people or most projects that have been through our kind of uh, pilot for the security audit have been fairly happy with the results. And it's also had an odd side effect where we've actually had some, uh, let's say, end user members reach out and have been thankful for uh, public security audits because um, let's say they're looking to adopt a piece of software and based on their regulated environment or something, this is a requirement for them um, to have before they could adopt something. So it's kind of had an odd odd side effect bonus. Uh, Matt, you have a question, sorry. I do, I haven't been through the security audit process and haven't looked at it. How does it compare to something like a threat analysis where you go figure out the different threats and understand them and, and that kind of thing? It, dep it depends kind of on the vendor you use and how detailed um, you want it. We essentially have a two week uh, pen test slash threat uh, analysis that is done by uh, a vendor and um, they go and try to basically poke as much holes, uh, write a report, go beta test your security disclosure process and so on to see that it's actually effective because uh, we have CNCF projects as they uh, get the CII best practice badge or requires them to define your disclosure process. But many of these projects don't actually, uh, they haven't like tested uh, it to see that it actually works. So it, it kind of does um, have its benefit there. So um, I'm happy to set up, a, a, if you want to talk to, a couple of our kind of vendors that we've used. I'm happy to set up a conversation uh, with them if 
uh, you want more details. Um, and there's, we have a bunch of reports they produce too that I could share also. Okay, I'd be curious to see what they have because I know we'll be doing that in Helm uh, yeah. when, with Helm 3 at some point and then hopefully not too distant future. Okay, when you're ready, uh, when you're ready, let us know because it's usually a two to three month kind of lead time to schedule. So, uh, okay. so just keep that in mind and send something to the service desk. Okay. Thanks okay. everybody. Hey, listen, I actually have to drop out because I've got to run to a meeting and uh, I'm sorry about that. Um, would uh, either Ken or Quinton be able to finish the last 20 minutes? Yeah, uh, I'm happy to. Go for it, Ken. All right, thank you. Um, thanks a lot, Ken. Bye-bye, uh, everybody. And I, I would really like us to make progress on the, the GitHub issue, please. I think now that GitHub is getting its approvals from the EU to be part of Microsoft, et cetera, it's a great time to ask Microsoft to make a few changes. Okay, bye-bye. Take, take care, Alexis. Take care. All right. Um, so I guess I should have asked for Alexis left, but... Um, are we we are following the presentation you sent out. Right? Yes. Yeah, well, there's a presentation and kind of agenda notes. So, I mean, there's a big uh, project slash review backlog. I created a project board for us. I don't know if that's yeah. an area. Let's look that at the project review. Yeah, let's look at that real quick. Uh, really, the the major uh, things for you uh, as a TOC to, to decide is um, we have a new. Uh, incubation proposal from the Harbor Project that's requesting a vote on that. Um, there's still the uh, security working group um, proposal. Uh, there's an etcd and Fluent D thing in flight. And then there's a huge backlog of um, projects that either want to present to the TOC or uh, have to be told no, or they have to write a formal proposal. So that's something for you to all kind of decide upon. Yeah, I think we need to make a distinction between the proposed sandbox projects and the proposed uh, incubation projects because the sense I got, and I'm not sure where we landed on this, is that we do want to hear from incubation projects, um, but we don't necessarily have the bandwidth to hear from all the sandbox projects, or certainly not in this session, uh, yeah. but there would possibly be an optional uh, separate session for those who wanted to find out about sandbox projects. Um, but you know, those don't get voted on generally uh, and there's perhaps less interest from the TOC members specifically in, in those projects. Now, it's really, I think, more about the, um, if I kind of read into the, the emails, right? I think it was really more on the lines of what kind of holding them up and slowing them down to have them come in and present to us, right? When for the most part, like you said, there's not a vote. There's, we haven't really said, I mean, if you look at the, the bar to get into the sandbox is not super high. And so I mean, it's like we're doing more harm, making them wait to present to us all this time than to just allow them to go into the sandbox and document, you know, have it documented correctly. But also we want to kind of cut back on some of the marketing that was going on by these projects by being in the sandbox, right? Because it's really not, it's really not a statement by the CNCF that these projects are, you know, necessarily, you know, E projects that we are backing as a, as a community, but we're not also not backing them. So it's kind of a, we have to kind of figure out how we want to word that. It's kind of a, an odd, an odd way we're looking at the sandbox. Just we probably need to clarify that a little bit better. Um, Ken, I, I don't know that this is going to totally satisfy you or the TOC, but I, I did just want to mention that we updated the way we present the sandbox in our mm -hmm. overview deck. Um, and um, we explicitly do it in the context, I, I've just pasted into a Zoom, of the cliche of crossing the chasm. And so on the previous slide, we list our, our graduated and our incubating projects. And we describe those as matching up for suitable for early prag pragmatists. And we make the argument that uh, Kubernetes crossed the chasm in 2018 and then incubating is suitable for early adopters or visionaries. But we make this idea that sandbox is, is for innovators or techies. So it's the, the very small leading edge there. Right. Yeah, post it in Slack too, if you want to see the picture. Yeah, I think this is, this is I like the, um, I like the direction you're, you're going with this, Dan. I think it's something that maybe, um, as a TOC, we can sort of look at this deck 
and, and maybe give feedback to you guys on it. In general, sure. I like. The, I would be happy to hear it on the. the, the, the I, li I like the yeah. um, the direction that we're setting. But I, I did. We did based on the feedback the last couple of weeks. Just yeah, separate the sandbox onto a different slide at the very least. And I thought there were some statements you guys made about sandbox projects too, with like in regards to like the marketing and and things like that too. Well, we we stopped doing blog posts. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we've been taking all the feedback very seriously. Uh, Dan, there was actually a press release just this morning, which which clearly carried CNCF uh, endorse, endorsement of a sandbox project. Um, is, is that a, what, what are we doing to stop that? Uh, Chris, can you comment on that one? Yeah, I'd have to go see what the uh, actual issue. I haven't, I haven't seen seen that one yet. So, Wait, was that we'll something that, that we published, or was that something that the the project? It was something about? that the project published, but but it had a lot of uh, quotes explicitly from Dan and the CNCF. Yeah, that could have been a mistake or something. I'd, I'd have to look at it. So I, I think that one was right that fly, if I remember correctly. If I remember, if I, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I believe it's uh, Sissig and Falco. Yeah, and Falco. Um, but I, I mean, we can, right, I can take the feedback about asking that they not do a, a press release. Um, it wasn't the fact that they did a press release. Uh, it, was a, it was the fact that the press release was. Uh, I think they quoted, quoted you. I see your email now, Quentin. Sorry. Yeah. With Falco. Okay. Uh, no, but yeah, this wasn't. I believe I had a journalist uh, ask me a question that I was uh, quoted in, but I, I, I'm I'm very happy to uh, re refine what we're doing here and and just do less of it. I think it would be, I think it'd be helpful to kind of look at that and how we, because it's, I know I'm getting, I was asked by um, one of the projects to talk with a journalist also about, um, not the project, but just in general. And I I can see based on this email, Quentin, that we have to be kind of careful with this because it could definitely lead to the things we're not intending. So I think it's a good, good feedback, not just for you, Dan, but I think for all of us that should probably think about what we're, who we're talking to and what we're saying to them. Well, and I, I think the way to resolve this is just to, to lower the bar um, in terms of we talked about allowing projects into the sandbox with the approval of one or two TOC members. Um, if, we, if we do that consistently, that will, that will have the effect I think that we want um, because the projects will realize that actually this is attainable to this is actually doesn't actually mean anything. This is kind of like I mean, this mean anything, but it, it is it is akin to hosting your project on GitHub. Just because you host your project on GitHub does not mean that Microsoft endorses what you're doing. Um, and that's what we want. I mean, I think we want we want to provide. Yeah, you host your project on GitHub because you have all of these services that are available to you. But it doesn't mean that GitHub is making an endorsement about what you're doing. And I think that that's what we want to approach. I see that Bob Bob Wise also has a question, so he's got his hand. Yeah, up. I think I think I was uh, just gonna make sort of a similar point um, in another way, which is even um, describing uh, sandbox projects as somehow being like the leading edge or the thought innovators is actually pretty highly endorsive. Um, and if the intention is, and and I think I understand that the intention is to provide an area for people to collaborate and experiment. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's different than saying this is the leading edge of open source projects. Yeah, I agree. And I think the, the way Bob just described it is the way that we want to think about it. It's, a, it, it's yeah. a place for people to collaborate and experiment and get some of the resources of the CNCF in, in the most abstract sense. Uh, does that mean we're asking Dan to upgrade his docs on what a sandbox project is to, to change it? To, or downgrade, yes. Or downgrade to, to essentially change the way we describe sandbox. 
it, yeah, I mean, but, but be, sandbox it, isn't early adopters. That, that's that's incubating. The sandbox is for for techies, meaning trying out new things. I, I mean, there, there's there's nothing right. magic about this. I mean, I, it, it, so it, it, I, I'm I'm willing to change it, but it, it's trying to make the point that it's the smallest possible um, market of folks are are should be looking at these or or using them. It's it's Save very it, it's trying to. This is all for techies, so that's a very peculiar way of describing it. Let's just go with Bob's description, um, okay. which I think is is pretty concise. And unless other members of the TOC object, um, I, I think that that, that that captures the spirit of what we're trying to do. It, it's the sandbox projects create a place for the community to experiment. Yes. I, I posted what we have on the website and the readme, so uh, have, I'll, I'll send a note to the TOC on it. But if you have updates on language changes, happy to. Uh, to make them done. So. I think we say what you're trying to say, Brian, in the actual sandbox uh, uh, proposal that we initially did. So, but, but please take a look at it. Yeah, we definitely we should clean. We need to try to clean this up. And I know there's been a lot of good input from Brian and Camille and others on the TOC on this and Quentin. So, cool. appreciate your, your responsiveness, Dan and Chris. Another thing to think about is I don't know what you want on the agenda for November six. So uh, given that that's coming up, so given that we only have a, about eight minutes left, if you want to discuss that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think that's we're not doing any project proposals. You know, there was one in the, the slide that was a mistake, right? Yeah, th there may be uh, potential graduation uh, reviews and stuff because there's some projects that have expressed interest in doing a graduation review. I believe Envoy is interested, so, um, but they haven't finalized it yet. So uh, I could add those as they come up. Um, and also the maintainer uh, survey results in kind of finalized forms with takeaway, I will also add for the agenda November 6. And then Patrick just said container D wants to be proposed for graduation November 6. So I think we're gonna see, uh, you know, a few or a handful of, of requests, yeah. Yep. Yep. I think that makes sense. Cool. And then maybe um, we can have a um, try to bring the discussion we had earlier to completion yeah. on the agenda as well. Cool. The helping projects discussion. Yep. I, I noticed this thing like key cloak. That's that was not meant for today, or was that meant for today? No, we don't. We don't. So we so the TOC needs to decide whether you want to uh, invite them to present or just have them formalize the proposal um, and uh, go on the hunt for TOC sponsors. So if it's the latter, like which I think you're pushing for sandbox protection yep. projects to do, I'm happy to just tell them come back with a project proposal and. Yep, um, that's perfect. I'll, Okay. Yeah. Well, also, I'll just do that if no one objects. Uh, just one variant on that. I, I thought that there was some interest from the community and some members of the TOC in some of the sandbox projects. And so one possibility would be to have a separate, completely optional forum where um, sandbox projects could optionally present and TOC members or the community could optionally attend. Um, and and handle it that way, rather than just saying there are none or okay. there are some at the TOC meeting. I think the answer is there are none. There are no sandbox presentations at the formal TOC meeting. There is a separate uh, scheduled session where those can be you know presented, and you don't have to do one of those presentations to get into the sandbox. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Maybe record that presentation as well, and it just okay. gives the project an opportunity to form a narrative about itself. So no, I think it's a good idea. Yeah. And I think one thing we could do, Chris, is maybe, yep. um, are there any TOC members that would like to reach out to this, or have the, you know, the Red Hat team here at doing the Key Cloak project reach out to you? Yeah. Are you interested yeah. in sponsoring this? Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll reach out to them and let them know on the proposal front. If there's any TOC sponsors that want to sponsor Key Cloak, let me know. I'm happy to, to help them with the proposal. Um, 
Yeah, I think, I think it'd be good to kind of have, we can maybe use these types of meetings to identify those okay. first as well. Okay. So in the future, yeah. we can maybe list like the projects that are looking to go into the sandbox and at least give TLC members a heads up as to like what's okay. being requested. That way we can then kind of figure out the sponsorship piece. And I love, I love Brian's idea about recording those discussions so that we can have a record of it. Right, and I guess there's only a few minutes left. Are there any um, any um, topics that uh, any other TLC members want to bring up? Right, cool. I guess I'll uh, give you guys a few minutes back then. Uh, we'll meet um, cool. meet again on the sixth of November. All right. Cool. Take care, all. Cheers, all.